<laughs> At universities across the United States, tens of thousands of Chinese students come to study engineering and technology with hopes of someday finding a job here. Yes, I want to work here. It's less pressure than China and uh, also can, the salary is very high, but I, I don't know if I can. When we look at uh, the number of students who are able to find those positions working in companies who are able to receive the work permits they need, uh, we're seeing a decrease in that. We're also seeing an increase in the number of rejections. One of the hardest hit sectors is semiconductors. According to the Silicon Valley Leadership Group, China imports nearly $300 billion worth of computer chips from U.S. companies annually. Under U.S. rules, foreign nationals, including Chinese, must get special licenses in order to work on sensitive technologies like semiconductors. From 2013 to 2017, Chinese nationals accounted for more than 60 percent of the approved licenses. But Leroy Munoz says, while it used to take a couple of weeks to get approved, it's now averaging about six to eight months. It's making it more difficult for companies to get the work they need right away. It's also making the United States and Silicon Valley in particular less attractive as a destination for some of the smartest, most skilled workers from around the world. The engineer has gotten a visa, they're working for a company, but then the company tries to assign them to a particular project and they can't get onto it because the license is being held up. Gwen Epps says while companies lose out on skilled workers, the region could also lose out on job creation from potential Chinese founders. Some of them end up starting companies and uh, have had a big impact on, on Silicon Valley. Weili Dai, who was uh, born in Shanghai, is one of the co-founders of Marvell, which is a, a large chip company now with over 5,000 employees. Ken Shi, who has founded several companies, including Fortinet, which is one of the largest cybersecurity companies in Silicon Valley, 5,000 employees. Leroy Munoz says the Trump administration also views access to sensitive technologies as a threat. They view the situation as if we don't assert technological dominance now, we risk falling behind China. And the fear on the part of the administration is that that threat also is not only a technology threat, but possibly also a national security threat when we look at issues around artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Leroy Munoz's Silicon Valley Leadership Group has more than 350 members, including top chip makers such as Intel and Samsung Semiconductor. He says while members understand the security concerns, they also want the Trump administration to realize the risks and costs of losing out on long-term innovation. Mark New, CGTN, Mountain View, California.